Reverend Lucy Opris of the Huntington Congregational Church and I, Church of Christ in Shelton, Connecticut. Where no matter who you are, no matter where you're on life's journey, you are more than welcome here. And we are certainly very happy for this beautiful, beautiful day to worship in God's creation. Uh, just some announcements. Just a reminder, we still do need some volunteers for our Valley Refugee Resettlement Program. And uh, you can uh, call the church for more information about that. Also, the Women's Fellowship is doing a monetary collection for cleanup buckets for Church World Service in light of the recent devastating floods in Kentucky. So um, if you'd like to, you can write a check to HCC with memo buckets, it, buckets in the memo for that. Um, also, our annual picnic is going to be coming up, and that will be on September 11th. So please, uh, if you would like to, you can sign up in the ELCO, or you can contact Sue Schmidt, our moderator, for that. So let's take a moment to close our eyes and take some nice deep breaths as we center our thoughts on God. In the midst of this nature, we are surrounded by the presence of God. In the midst of our everyday lives, we are surrounded by the presence of God. Whether we are inside or outside, whether we are asleep or awake, we are surrounded by the presence of God. Let us all just breathe deeply and feel that presence in us and through us and around us. Please join me in the call to worship. Called from the corners of the earth. Get to the bright light. Gifts. Gifts. Gathered for support and encouragement. Filled with the Holy Spirit. We come to give thanks and praise. We, we come, come to worship God. God. Gathered here in the mystery of this hour. Gathered here in one strong body. Gathered here in the struggle and the power. Spirit draw near. Gathered here in the mystery of this hour. struggle and the power spirit draw near gathered here in the mystery of this hour gathered here in one strong body gathered here in the struggle and the power spirit draw near spirit Let us pray. O oh, Holy One, fill us with the power of your presence in this place and time. Help us to claim who and whose we are, rejoicing in our diversity and in our giftedness. Open us up to all people who are all part of one humanity. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from Paul's letter to Corinthians, his first letter. Chapter 12, reading verses 4 through 13. Listen for the word of God. Now there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are varieties of service, but the same Lord. There are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, 
to another the workings of miracles, to another a prophecy, to another discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same spirit who allots each one individually just as the spirit chooses, one body with many members. But just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many are one, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit, we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. May God add a, read, a blessing to the hearing and reading of these holy words. Let us pray. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. How many gifts do we truly take for granted? There are many kinds of gifts. First of all, close your eyes. Take a nice deep breath. That's a gift. The gift of air, the gift of the wind, a gift of this creation, the gift of the ability to actually take that breath in. We take that for granted all the time. We take for granted our movement. And it's only when we lose our mobility that we realize what a gift that was. We have the gift of our intellect and our reason. We have the gift of our hearts and our emotions. We have the gifts that God gives us every moment of our lives. We all have those gifts in various measure. But then there are other gifts that we all have that might be different from other people's gifts. We know that some people are great gardeners. We know that some people are great cooks. We know that some people are great with numbers. Some people are great with words. Some people are great with working with their hands. Some people are great with artistic endeavors. Some people are great with working with their minds and with concepts. And the list can go on and on and on and on. But how often are we grateful for our gifts? How often do we take inventory of our gifts? How often do we really use our gifts to their highest potential? And what is their highest potential? Well, the Apostle Paul gives us a bit of a clue. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. And the manifestation of the Spirit, of course, is all the gifts that we have that God gives us. For the good, the common good. How many times do we use our gifts not for the common good? How many times do we use our gifts for self-serving purposes that perhaps could actually harm someone else. <clears throat> when we use our gifts, they are to be used not for war, but for peace. Our gifts are to be used not to perpetrate injustice, but rather work for justice. Our gifts are to be used for, not to be used for regression, but for progression. Our gifts are to be used not for revenge, but for reconciliation. Our gifts are not to be used for greed, but for generosity. Our gifts are not to be used for selfishness, but for selflessness. Our gifts are not to be used for destruction, but for creation. Our gifts are to be used for, not for hate, but for love. So how are we doing? How are we doing using our gifts to the best of our abilities for which they have been given? 
in the spirit for the common good. Now everybody thinks that sometimes, well, you know, I, I don't have the gift of preaching, or I don't have the gift of prophecy, or I can't teach Sunday school, or I can't get up and lead worship. But those are specific gifts and not everybody has them. There are those gifts that are considered quote unquote religious gifts. <clears throat> but just because we may not have a quote unquote religious gift of doing what I do every Sunday or doing what the monks do or doing what the nuns do or doing what the ministers and priests do doesn't mean that we are not serving God with our gifts. You all serve God as being members of our church, as being participants in the ministry, as showing forth God's love in the things you do and you say in your family and in your community, not just on Sunday, not just up up front. We are all called to use our actions and our words to show forth God's realm in this place. It's all our calling, not just some people's calling. When we take the moniker Christian as our own, it says something. And if we are not using that moniker to glorify God and to work for the common good of humanity, then that name means nothing. We see a lot of evidence in our world today using the name of Jesus Christ to perpetrate violence and hate and intolerance and racism and sexism and homophobia. It's all over. We see it every single day. And that's not what God gives our gifts for. God gives our gifts for us to cultivate a spirit of love, a spirit of acceptance, a spirit of peace and a spirit of justice in our world to make it a better place for everybody, not just for a few. That's our calling. That is what the spirit instills in us to do in this world, to be agents of love and of peace and of justice and to work for the common good. Doesn't matter what gifts we have, what matters is how we use them. To each is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. May, our, you, may we use our gifts to make this world a better place. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us come to God in prayer. Oh, holy God, you have given us this beautiful morning. You have given us the very air we breathe. You have given us the movement of our bodies. You have given us the thoughts of our mind. And when we do have diminishing abilities, you give us courage and strength and people to help us. Your gifts are never ending. May we always be grateful. May we not take them for granted. We thank you so much for your son, Jesus Christ, who came into this world to show us not how to be divine, but how to be truly human. <clears throat> to use our words and our actions for love. And we thank you for your Holy Spirit that pokes us and prods us and urges us to use our gifts for the common good. We 
thank you, gracious God, for the gifts of people that you give us. For our family and our relatives and our, our friends, the people you put around us that support us and love us. And also for the folks that teach us and challenge us we have those lessons to learn too like patience and forgiveness and we thank you gracious god for the many ways we can enjoy your creation with birthdays and anniversaries and vacations we thank you for the places in this world that give us hope and comfort and we thank you that you're always with us through it all. The good times and the bad times, the laughter and the tears. So we do now ask for your spirit to be with us as we think about the people and the circumstances in our lives and in our world where we need your presence we offer our prayers to you in this moment of silence. We pray for those who are mourning We pray for those who have gotten a bad diagnosis. We pray for those who are sick. We pray for those who have a chronic illness. We pray for those who have cancer. We pray for those who are in the hospital, in nursing homes, in memory care facilities, in rehabilitation centers. We pray for those who are at home. We pray for those who are confused. We pray for those who are dealing with addictions. We pray for those who are dealing with relationship issues. We pray for those who are dealing with job issues. We pray for those who are dealing with financial issues. We pray for those who are dealing with oppression and injustice. We pray for those who are dealing with homelessness and hunger. We pray for all circumstances, O oh God, where your healing touch is needed. A healing touch of body, of mind, or of spirit. And for our world, gracious God, we pray for your love that leads to justice, that leads to peace. Help us to take our blinders off and see each other as truly siblings of one flesh and one bone. We are so much the same than we are different. Help us to embrace our sameness. Help us to embrace our diversity. Help us to embrace our own personal gifts that you have given each one of us. That the spirit may truly motivate us to use them for the common good, for love and light and life. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So we are in the midst of our season of generosity. And so far I haven't gotten a lot of responses to what ACC, UCC means to me. But I look around us today and I think this is one way it means a lot to us. To be together, 
on a Sunday morning, to enjoy the sunshine and the beauty of God's creation, to see our favorite places on our t-shirts and have some beginning conversations of the wonders of our creation. I think that's a wonderful thing that one of the very many things that HCC, UCC means to me. And I thank you so much for your generosity and your continuing generosity to make this ministry a ministry of a place of healing and a place of hope. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you so much for all the gifts you give us, both physical and non-physical. May we be inspired by your spirit to use them to reach this world with your love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. The closing hymn is the tune of Amazing Grace. So, you know. So no matter where you are, no matter what you are doing, no matter what you are saying, may it be filled with God's spirit. And may that spirit motivate us to use our gifts to make this world a better place. So may God bless you and keep you. May God stay shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God look upon you with kindness and give you peace. Find us together, Lord, find us together with cords that cannot be broken. Find us together, Lord, find us together, Lord, find us together in love. Go in peace. Amen.